In this episode of the Cozy Let's Play, we build a lovely cottage core bee house at the base of the Mossy Acres windmill. Hey there! Today on the farm will probably be the last day on the farm, at least for the time being. But don't worry, that's a good thing. Today's build should be the final build in Mossy Acres for now, as we're going to soon begin to branch out to nearby areas and different types of projects. With today's bee farm, that is more so a bee house, I believe we should have enough of a farm set up to last us for a while, with various food items, animals, and aesthetic fields all accounted for. After which, I believe we will shift our focus to the nearby open area along the river on the opposite side of that cherry grove. So we'll still be in this area connecting everything together. So with all that said, we've got a bee house to construct. Let's jump into it. First things first, we need a pallet and foundation for our build. For this one, I decided to use a different set of blocks from our usual so far, with bricks, terracotta, and polished granite making up the walls. We've been using a lot of various wood-based pallets and recently made a stone-based selection work, so I figured why not give this one a go, and in my opinion, it worked out pretty well. As the building starts to get put together, I do want to bring up something I had mentioned in the previous episode, and that is video scripting. After many improvised voiceovers through the first eight episodes, it was finally time for me to give this style a try. So you'll have to make sure to let me know down below in the comments if you enjoy this style and or any overall comments on it. Carrying on with the build and hand, however, I once again decided on fences for the windows as it accomplishes quite the aesthetic. Dark oak wood is the play for this building as I feel its contrast with the reds and terracotta, bricks and granite works out very well, especially with the rooftop being built of darker wooden colors framed by spruce slabs. Speaking of the rooftop, for the shape of it, I've gone with a nice calm curve, giving it sort of an elongated dome shape, making sure that it fits in with much of the other buildings on the farm. You might notice that in the fancy replay cinematic here, a few things are a bit scuffed. I'd love to be informed if one of you knows why. My player skin is a bit messed up in the final product here. It's just showing undetailed black pixels below the head and nothing that I'm holding in my hands appears to show up, whether it be tools, blocks, food, or anything really. No idea why that happened and I can't recall running into it in the past and maybe it doesn't matter. It could be that I'm just being a bit nitpicky, but if you've used replay mob before and might know why this is, do tell below. Regardless, back to the build, and in terms of said build, I decided on a rooftop pallet that we've actually used before. You may remember it, we used this combination of mangrove wood and dark oak logs in tandem way back in episode 2 for the Cherry Creek Cottage. It's not exactly the sort of pallet you'd normally think of, but I do like trying to make it work because those colors and textures together, for whatever reason, are really nice to me. I touched on the rooftop shape a bit already, but I do want to point out that in this world as a whole, the things we're building in this series have been seriously great for my learning as a builder, from new rooftop shapes to practicing the cottage core look, and even building a farm with all of these fun details. It's done a lot more for my metaphorical toolbox when building than I expected, and all of this to say, I encourage you guys to step out of your comfort zone in terms of building, whether it be the same project or world you're already working on, or a newer and maybe smaller project as as an excuse to do so, give something different a try, work at it for a bit, experiment with different styles and shapes and themes, you might just surprise yourself with how much you pick up on. For the interior bits of the bee house here, the feel we're going for is almost stables-esque, where I've divided it into two halves with a walkway going through the center. In that middle area, just throwing some storage and shelves for the looks does the trick, at least until the pathway gets detailed later on. As for the two rooms on either side, I want to try and carry the pathways over into to them, albeit a slightly altered version with just packed mud and coarse dirt. Inside, I think having five beehives placed around the area is plenty, some in a line against a wall and a couple on a stand. After adding those, we can fill up some of the open space in each room with various flowers of all sorts. For the entryway into either room, I went with dark oak fences and fence gates to flow with the dark oak fence windows and to prevent any bees from getting loose, but with a design a little more interesting than just a standard door. 
now that we've got the interior bits of the build complete, it's time to link it up with the rest of Mossy Acres. With the area we've chosen for the bee house, all we have to do is connect a pathway from the building to the lead up for the windmill up on the hill, all while keeping the same pathway design, of course, as I believe we will continue to do even on the other side of the nearby hill outside of the proper farm areas. On a side note, I want to ask you guys about any build ideas you may have for the nearby area that we're going to start shifting our focus to shortly. We're pretty much done with the farm related builds for the time being and I want to shift to more of a village sort of feel with constructing various fitting pieces like a bakery, a few houses, maybe a fancy well, some docks on the river, those sorts of things. I've got a short list of ideas but I'm sure that there's more that I'm not thinking of to this point and would love for some ideas and inspiration if you've got any to put in the comments below. The final touches for this build include a Mossy Acres classic and that is of course leaves and lots of leaves. Maybe I go a bit overboard but to me there is rarely a bad time for some leaves accenting an exterior wall or rooftop and as such we'll apply it to this bee house all the same. I think about adding some vines as well but we're all out of string to contain the rapid growth and I don't actually think this building will need any as it fits nicely with the farm as is. Nonetheless our bee house is done and that leaves us with one final piece to the puzzle. The bees. There's a couple of options for getting some bees brought over, but luckily we've already got some leads sitting at the cottage, so we're gonna do this the old fashioned way. I haven't previously scouted any bee nests, at least any that still have bees flying around. I say that because for whatever reason, some of the nests nearby no longer have any active bees. I don't know what's happening, but they're all disappearing. So with that be the case, we've got to venture out into the wild to find ourselves some of those sweet, sweet buzzing honey makers. Not too far out, from home and we've located the first bee. However, it seems to be all alone with no others anywhere to be found, so onward to search for more. It took a while, but as I stumble about through this birch forest, there's finally another sighting. And this little dude is really going out of his way to make it difficult for me to snag him with a lead. I would have stretched if I knew I had parkour to do today. Regardless, with the second bee in tow, it turns out that there's even more right around the corner. And with two extra leads, why don't we go ahead and bring another two? Now then, four bees should absolutely do the trick. But getting them all the way back will surely be a tedious task in and of itself. Over the course of this trek, there have been more obstacles than I expected. These guys will find absolutely anything and everything to get caught on, distracted by, or stuck within. They are cute though, so they've got that going for them. For the most part, this journey has remained mostly the same. However, since I've reached the cherry grove, these bees have gone absolutely haywire. I guess they treat every flower petal patch on the ground as normal flowers, or at least things that they can pollinate. And as a result, trying to move them at all is a nightmare. Their pathfinding or whatever it is has them getting distracted by almost every single one of the flowers on the ground. And with every increase in elevation, the bees get caught at the ledge due to them trying to fly in the opposite direction. And pulling the bees against the ledge doesn't bring them up and over it. This is painful. I should have taken the long way around, never take bees through cherry groves. All painful things come to an end eventually though, and am I being dramatic about this? Nonetheless, we've got bees, which brings us to the next tedious thing to do, breed up the bees until either side of the house has 15 total to cover each of the beehives constructed. You may have already caught on to something way back when I initially built the bee house, and that is the question of how I plan to acquire things like honeycomb and honey bottles. Well, I'll have you know, I did not think about that whatsoever. It did eventually click, however, and now I realize that I need room for campfires under each of these beehives. Somehow, only a single bee was angered and unfortunately died in the process of adjusting the stacked beehives, and with that, we've got room now to add campfires underneath each of these little buzzing homes to make the collection process much much safer. Alongside the campfires, we'll need to add under the beehives. I also figure we're going to want some glass bottles and shearers lying around the place for whenever we want to collect. Rather than running all the way back to the cottage where I keep most everything, let's go ahead and cook up some glass using our brand new smelter building so that the bee house itself can have everything we'll need for it in the future. Given the storage containers used for decoration purposes, they should be perfect for storing both the collection tools and actual items collected from the bees, so at least we still don't have 
have to figure that part out. That completes the Bee House addition to Mossy Acres, but with some time left in this episode, I want to put some work into our mapping of the nearby regions. If you recall back a handful of videos, we started a mapping project that has yet to progress since that first step. So why don't we do some adventuring and get more of the area on paper. For this little montage of filling the map out, I feel like a nice little touch on the episode could be letting the various sounds of each area do the talking. After quite the journey, we're back at the Cherry Grove and ready to add this new map next to the original to mark the halfway point of completing this little 2x2 section of fully zoomed out maps with the spawn of the world relatively in the center. I just noticed that our zoomed in map of the Cherry Grove and of Mossy Acres is out of date and a good chunk of our work hasn't been accounted for yet. So let's go ahead and update these maps while we're at it. Of course, I couldn't not show you the slow updating of some of these maps as I load them in, as it's just so satisfying to look at. My only regret is that for some of them, I wasn't far enough out and they updated as soon as I looked at them. Maps are so underrated and underutilized in my opinion. Maps are so much fun in any context and I'm a big nerd for them so this little mini project has been super enjoyable to work on and a lovely addition to the early stages of this world so far all said and done here's what it looks like with the outdated version of the map being turned from this into this with us preparing to move on to the next nearby area having all of mossy acres accounted for as of now sets us up perfectly for whenever we've got more things to add nearby further down the road when we can do a big map update once again that's a wrap for today's progress, the final day in Mossy Acres, at least for the time being. The bee house build was an interesting one to attempt as I wanted to avoid a traditional sort of greenhouse style and go for something a bit more unique. But I hope you all like how it turned out, and I hope I'm not the only one who nerds out big time over the map stuff. Huge shout out to everyone who supports the content through Patreon, and if you're new here and don't already know, come check us out on Twitch. I'm live over there five days a week, and the link will be in the description. That's all for me today though, don't forget to leave any suggestions on what we could build in a nearby non-farm related area and until the next one I will see you there.